what was the Rockefeller Foundation's involvement in the Gambia campaign? What, what was their role? Was this the International the, Health Division? This uh, was the International Health, the, the part of the Rockefeller Foundation, the field team in the International Health Division was the, was the team that was assigned to Brazil in cooperation with the government of, of Brazil to eradicate Anopheles Gambia from the continent. It had never, an eradication of a mosquito had never been accomplished and hasn't really been accomplished since that I, that I know about, perhaps. But it was, uh, it was done with, with full cooperation of the government of Brazil, and um, use was made of some previous exper experience. The, the eradication of, of uh, Aedes aegypti had just preceded this, and the personnel that had been trained in that uh, eradication was useful in, in this new project. Then after the Gambia campaign, uh, you and Otis uh, did what? You stayed on in Brazil? Oh yes. Well, the war came along. The, the Gambia campaign uh, carried on for a year after the last Gambia was found, and that, but there was still the laboratory and the, the, the checking to be done. But just about, well, when um, Pearl Harbor came along, and the plans were formulated to send troops, send uh, planes through Brazil to Africa and Europe. Uh, the, um, I don't know just how and when the Institute of Inter-American Affairs was started in the, health, in the State Department in the United States, but um, that was headed by uh, Nelson Rockefeller, and the uh, pr uh, responsibility of seeing that troops could be uh, protected from the hazards of, of tropical <laughs> disease. And what, what were the diseases? <laughs> well, then? malaria and yellow fever, of course, were the big things. And um, that involved um, the sanitation of the port of the vicinity and of living uh, quarters. And then the uh, uh, offering of, of uh, medical help to the doctors and all who were taking care of the troops. So, um, Otis was lent by the Rockefeller Foundation to uh, the Institute of Inter-American Affairs. General Dunham was the uh, in charge of the the work in in Brazil of establishing this, um, uh, what it would be, um, monitoring and, and uh, sanitizing <laughs> unit. <laughs> uh, and we, I, we had known him in Hopkins. I think he'd been one of my students. So he persuaded Otis and me to that I should become a part of that uh, of that uh, group. Now, Callista, I understand you set up a bacteriology laboratory. Was that, that was the first laboratory there? In Belain? That was the first laboratory outside of the, the medical school. There was, a medical, there was a medical university of Pará, and there was this Evandro Chagas Institute that had been, um, it was at that time pretty much in, um, in abeyance that <coughs> hadn't been active for a number of years. Van der Chagas had, had done research up there in uh, Belain, had established this place. Uh, we, Otis was, was to be the, in charge of the laboratory <coughs> Van, uh, up in uh, Pará, and um, I don't know what part he had in choosing Evandro Chagas as the location, but anyway, it was established as the location. And um, the uh, CESPI, that the group in the Brazilian government, was the Serviço Especial de Saúde Pública. And they, uh, in a cooperation with this um, American group, established a Med a uh, tropical disease hospital. Well, that had to be built, that had to be 
furnished. Uh, it was one of those things that uh, took time. And um, General Dunham asked me to do the laboratory, to establish the clinical laboratory there. Well, that meant supplies had to be ordered. You know how <laughs> things go, how slowly things go, even in wartime. But it took time. But in the meantime, I could do work in training there in the, at the Institute of Van der Chagas. And we eventually got in, in uh, operation with staff from the medical university. The three, three young doctors, Lorenio Tachero and Miguel Azevedo and um, Otavio Morosha were the first. And Orlando Costa was a professor, and he joined also. Now, these people were to appear again later on in the later story. Later on, and yes. We'll come back to yes, that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you and Otis also did some research with uh, yellow fever in Brazil. Was this at the same time or later? Well, this was before. Before. This was... Um, in Passos. Now, wait a minute. No, that was after the war. And when we came back, we did, uh, went to Passos in, in Minas Gerais, uh, in almost central Brazil, uh, in the path of the progress of yellow fever in ten, at 10 year intervals from the north to the Rio, Argentina to the south. Um, and this, uh, this laboratory was established by the Rockefeller Foundation as a, were a branch from Manguinis. They were studying yellow fever in, in Manguinis. And this laboratory was a field study of the uh, monkeys and the mosquitoes, the, the setting for yellow fever. So that Otis was there a year or two before yellow fever was really expected, testing the uh, monkey population for antibodies. He trapped 2,000, uh, had 2,000 uh, trappings to uh, find out what was going on. And yellow fever did come eventually but not, not actually to pass us. We had to reach out to some of the outlying places. But by that time, we had collected, he had collected a large volume of information about the mosquito population and about the monkeys. Now, we teach our students that the Hemagogus mosquito uh, has a very long flight range. And we also teach them that that the causes were the ones who discovered this. <laughs> but <laughs> oh. how, did, how did this happen? But this was interesting, because at that time, the, there were many theories. How did yellow fever pass? Was it passing in the, tre uh, 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 the animals that went, uh, were being driven through? Was it the men who were, uh, the caboclos who were with them? Was it birds? Was it uh, other animals? Was it the monkeys? And uh, Otis um, set up s experiments to find out what the mosquitoes were doing uh, in order to see where they, how far they would go and where they would go. He um, sprayed them with um, fine dust. What do they call this fine uh, uh, spray that they use in um, uh, marking uh, volumes with gold dust and red dust and blue dust, you know. And were the these fluorescent blue. dyes? They were dyes that we saw under the microscope. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't know the, the fluorescence, but uh, they could be, you could uh, spray the mosquitoes and liberate them. And then he had a troop of boys who um, uh, went out of certain of the periods to capture the mosquitoes and brought them in. You couldn't always see whether they were stained or not till you examined them under the microscope. And even just one fleck of, of, of uh, so dye So you could would, tell how far the mosquitoes so had traveled? So where, from where you, they were caught, where they were uh, liberated, and where they were caught, and the time interval. 
And that was all. That was interesting too. So that uh, he could show that the mosquitoes that were caught at these distant uh, places were some of the mosquitoes that not only Hemagogus but Lucasellanius and some of the other uh, AEDs could also be involved in in uh, yellow fever in the in the jungle. And with whom did he do this work? This was with the Rockefeller Foundation in the, in the laboratory in Passage. That came afterward, yes. Uh, when I first arrived in Brazil and joined the laboratory, uh, Dr. Hugo Lambert was working with you there. Was he still there? Yes, then? he was. Yes. Well, he and was from Manguinis. He, he died a short time he, afterwards. Yes, but. yes. And he was, he was one of the uh, uh, group that went to um, uh, Belain at the time that we established the, the Rockefeller established the uh, virus laboratory. Um, they had wanted, in uh, Manguinis, they had wanted us to work with them rather than with CESPI. But it turned out that we had better autonomy with CESPI. We could work uh, in a, uh, a more independent way. And uh, he was welcomed, as his staff was in, and group was welcomed as a part of the investigation. And he did a lot of the field work in, in uh, collection of specimens. 